Hi everybody, welcome or welcome back to my channel. It's Natasha aka Wellness Diva Chronicles Keto and I'm back with another video. This video is a bit of a departure from most of the videos on the channel because instead of one recipe, this is going to be a meal prep style video so it'll be several recipes. You can go ahead and jump around the video. I'll have timestamp information down in the description box below in case you just want to target certain recipes or go ahead and watch the whole video all the way through if you like. Enjoy. I hope it's useful and helpful to you guys. You guys said that you definitely wanted a meal prep video So I wanted to get that out to you guys as soon as possible. Okay. Hope you're having a great day Let's get into the meal prep This first dish is versatile great for breakfast or any time of the day But it's particularly popular Sunday brunch in the West Indies It is saltfish or codfish With some stewed down eggplant and then also some hard-boiled eggs and avocado on the side. I like to top it with some kosher sea salt. It is a perfect combination of macros and taste and everything else. It's, it's delicious and it's going to make you want to make some extra hard-boiled eggs and keep them in the fridge. Seriously though guys, it's great to go ahead and boil like say six eggs ahead of time. It's great for meal prep because you can have it like as, as a part of a dish like this or make an egg salad. So many different things that you can do with eggs if you have them prepped ahead of time and they're great to take on the go if you need to just pop something in your bag. This meal option offers such a great combination of salt, fat, protein. It's ideal for keto. This meal is so simple and delicious you'll want to mix them ahead of time and keep it on hand every week. Plus it's easy to make keto staples like egg loaf or crisp up a tray of bacon so that you're ready to just put your meal items together Top with butter and sugar-free syrup and enjoy. Okay, now on to meal two, which is a great idea for lunch or dinner. On to our next meal prep item and one of my favorite low glycemic vegetables of all time, asparagus. I feel like asparagus, similar to Brussels sprouts, get kind of like a bad rep from what we remember from school lunches when they were soggy and just made very poorly and they were gross. But when they are roasted and topped with a drizzling of melted Kerrygold butter and some grapeseed oil along with a sprinkle of kosher sea salt, people often and quickly change their mind about asparagus and Brussels sprouts when I make them for them this way. I went ahead and made a simple butter and garlic sauce to drizzle on top of the asparagus as they baked. And I sprinkled on a dash of onion powder as well as the Flavor God lemon garlic powder onto the butter. I then add about two teaspoons of grapeseed oil to the butter. I added a generous sprinkling of the Old Bay seasoning. I then melted the butter mixture in the microwave for about 20 seconds. Once melted, I give the sauce a good stir to make sure everything is combined. I preheated my oven to 225 degrees Fahrenheit. Top your asparagus stalks with some coarse kosher salt. Then go ahead and drizzle your garlic butter sauce atop the asparagus and get it ready to pop it in the oven. I baked the asparagus at 225 degrees Fahrenheit for about 15 minutes and then checked on them, decided to flip them to make sure they're evenly cooked, then I put them back in the oven for about another 10 minutes. But go based on your oven, some ovens run hotter or cooler than others. I'll have all the information and details for each recipe made in the description box below. It would have gotten lengthy to put it within the video itself, but I'll put all the information down below. Also, use your own discretion in terms of how much food to prep based on how many people in your family you're trying to feed with the prep within between three to four days to keep the food as fresh as possible. Keto-friendly food options like making wings of any kind, fried wings of any kind, or buffalo barbecue wings of any kind are such a good option, especially if you have a mixed dietary household like most of us do, where some people are fully keto, others are not. This is a great option because it's easy to make a large amount of them at one time, and pretty much everybody in the house is going to want to eat them. 
I used Bobby's pickle juice to brine the chicken and tenderize it for about an hour, hour and a half. Then I went ahead and dried it all off with a paper towel. I want to take as much moisture out as I can and then proceed to just season the chicken. I had to go ahead and throw a little obey on the chicken as well. It definitely adds another dimension of flavor. If you've seen any of my other tutorials where I'm frying foods, you're probably used to the three-step process I use, mainly a coconut flour, salt, then egg white, and then another dredge. But I just used a dredge, like what would be the end step dredge. No eggs, no first dipping, just one round and shaking it up really well. And I really liked the way it came out. The crust was so light and crispy. It was delicious. Again, I'll leave all the ingredients for everything featured in the description box below, as well as timestamps so you can watch the whole video or just parts that you want to watch, whatever you want to do. So, so far the dredge mix is coconut flour, and then it is the premix dredge, which is pork rinds, Parmesan cheese, about a quarter cup each. And then I go ahead and start getting the seasonings in. So I add onion powder, lemon garlic by Flavor God, and some Old Bay. Go ahead and give the dredge a good shake to make sure all the ingredients are combined. Meanwhile, I have my pot over here over a medium heat. I want it to get evenly hot and hot enough to fry, but not so hot that it's going to burn the oil or cook the outside of the chicken while the inside is still raw. So you just want a happy medium. I especially like adding coconut flour to my dredge because it's very absorbent. And like I was saying before, we want to try to get the chicken as dry as possible, as packed with flavor and as dry as possible. I use grapeseed oil because it has a really high smoking point. I let that heat up for about five minutes. I went ahead and just flicked a little bit of water into the pot and the oil did spatter for me a bit. So I knew the oil's temperature was right in a good range to start frying the chicken. I deep fried the wings for five and a half minutes then set them aside on a cooling rack. I found this cheesy cauliflower risotto at Whole Foods and decided to give it a try. It's easy enough to make this from scratch if you look at the ingredients, but this could be good as a starter. I did absolutely add my own twist. I added some more seasonings, I added some more cream, and I added some more cheese to the recipe and cooked it down a bit longer than suggested. Initially, the pack just says to add a quarter cup of water and just keep stirring it occasionally. I found that it was a bit grainy. If you take a look at it there, it's still a bit grainy. So I added some additional ingredients. I added in three quarter of a cup of heavy cream. An ounce of plain cream cheese. A third of a cup of Italian blend cheese or any sharp cheddar you might have on hand. Then go ahead and continue to stir the risotto periodically for the remainder of the cook time. I cooked this in total for about 20 minutes until it was about this soft. You want it to be tender but not mushy. And just continue to stir. Stir the risotto occasionally to keep it from sticking to the pan. I decided to go ahead and add a quarter cup of grated Parmesan cheese to the risotto as well. I then sprinkled in about a third of a teaspoon of onion powder. I added about a half a teaspoon of dried oregano. And then just a pinch of sea salt, maybe about a quarter teaspoon coarse sea salt. Continue to cook the risotto over a very low heat until the cauliflower is tender but not mushy. Just keep watching it and stirring it occasionally to make sure it doesn't stick to the pan. Give it about an additional eight minutes until it's creamy like this. I think this combination of the fried chicken, risotto, and asparagus is perfect for any time of day, but it's really great for a dinner or lunch. Now it's great to have meals completely made and ready to heat, just heat up and eat, but another part of meal prep that's really essential and can help you to keep things spicy throughout the week and not get bored eating the same things over and over again is to just prep ingredients like chop up onions, chop up peppers, chop up some cheese, have prosciutto on hand, something that you can just grab really easily. 
And it's always an excellent idea to have keto-friendly finger foods like pickles and olives on hand for when you're ready to snack. Have prepared meals, but then also have prepped items and snacks available all the time so you make sure you stay on track. And of course, a high-quality mayo or any sugar-free sauces and condiments can also help to boost your fat intake during the day if you need that. I'll also usually have on hand some butter lettuce or some romaine lettuce that I'll wash and dry and have in a container. And then also I'll chop up a cucumber or two and have that set aside so I can toss into salads or eat it with the prosciutto dish that I'm about to make in a second here. Now onto our next meal idea. It's super simple, super tasty. It's just a prosciutto wrap with cheddar, cucumber, and mayo. You can put this together in minutes and it really does keep well in the fridge for days. You can just use the prosciutto as the base Lay down a layer of mayo, then add in some cheese, cucumber, and any other low-carb veggies of your choosing. Once you add all your fillings to your wraps, you can go ahead and just roll them and you'll see you have a nice little sandwich, a breadless sandwich. It's delicious and it's so versatile. You can fill it with whatever you want. In addition to having handy snacks like olives and pickles on hand, most people on a ketogenic diet are also going to want to have an ample amount of eggs, some egg whites because a lot of recipes do call for that, and some quality butter like Kerrygold, that's one of my favorites, and I usually have heavy cream in the house as well. Also having pre-made supplements like this Koya Keto, I love the caramel one. It's really handy to just have something to grab really quickly out of the fridge, especially during times when you're meal prepping for later and just want something on the go. Also, I definitely keep fresh avocado and low glycemic nuts in the house for snacking. Okay, we're on to our last item for meal prep. This is a really easy recipe and it comes in super handy throughout the week. We're simply going to season and bake up a whole chicken. By the way, a whole chicken, whether it's rotisserie or baked, however you want to cook it, Making the whole chicken ahead of time is such a great idea because you can eat the pieces in individual meals or turn it into a chicken salad. Once the chicken's out of the brine, you want to go ahead and heavily season it. Make sure the chicken is well seasoned on all sides. I then sealed the whole chicken with a food saver bag and let it marinate in the refrigerator overnight. However, if you're in a hurry, sealing it in a food saver bag should have it pretty well marinated in about an hour. Go ahead and flip the chicken and make sure that it's seasoned on the other side. And I like to go ahead and score the chicken like that with a knife just to let the seasonings penetrate even more. Once marinated, I placed the whole chicken on a grate onto a pan lined with parchment paper, getting it ready for the oven. 
Also, by the way, just a little diva tip, using the grate really helps to get heat all the way around the chicken for more of a convection style cooking, more of an even cooking, and keeping the chicken tender on the inside, crispy on the outside. Bake the chicken for 20 minutes at 225 degrees Fahrenheit. Come back and check it because you're gonna wanna baste it with the butter that we melted in the microwave. Then return the chicken to the oven and cook for about another 25 to 30 minutes until completely cooked through. By the way, I did go ahead and get the spaghetti version of the Natural Heaven noodles. And since I'll have chicken left over and you guys have asked for it, I'm looking to make a chicken alfredo tutorial in the near future. Go on ahead and hit that notification bell so that you see the video as soon as it posts. And then we can't forget sweets. I always have some Halo Top in the freezer. I'm also in love with this Butter Pecan Fat Bomb. The tutorial for this is on the channel and I'll link it in the description box below. These are just a few examples of some really great dishes that are quick and easy to make ahead of time on keto. Something for breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, dessert, a little bit of everything. I encourage you to share this video with anybody you care about who's on keto and looking to spice their diet up a little bit. By the way, I could definitely see these maple chapels with some of my keto fried wings or a remix on so many different meals that we can make for meal prep. Comment below and let me know if you'd like to see these meal prep videos as a series. There really are a lot of options to experiment with and incorporate into your current meal plan. I'd love to continue sharing my favorite meal prep recipes with you and also get into some of your requests. Which of your favorite recipes would you like to see me keto fi What do you miss the most on keto? I'll do my best to incorporate it into future meal prep videos. By the way, this dressing that I just found is definitely worth mentioning. I recently found this Asiago Caesar salad made by the company Rihanna's Home Style, and it is so good. Plus, it's only two carbs for a two tablespoon size serving. Kudos to you if you made it to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed all the recipes. I love them so much. I hope you do as well. Comment below if you make them. I hope you enjoy them. I hope your entire family enjoys them, and I hope to see you again soon.